Hello, my movie-loving peeps. Thank you so much for clicking on an episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Oh, we got some movie news to talk about today. Some of the stuff we're going to be talking about here is we got our first trailer for John Wick 4. I'll be giving you my thoughts on that. We got an update on the upcoming It prequel series titled Welcome to Dairy. The title for the upcoming Godzilla vs. Kong sequel. Really, that along with so much more. So I'm going to need you movie fans to give me your opinions down below with everything we discussed here today. Just to let you guys know, I already posted my review for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm actually on my way to see it for a second time. Time after this video that way I can also be fully prepared for my spoiler review so just stay tuned for those videos but without further ado let's dive in some of the trailers that were released this week and determine whether they were trash or treasure because one man trash is another man's treasure starting off here with the trailer for John Wick 4 man who would have thought when that first John Wick movie came out we would be on the fourth film fully invested into this assassin universe and with the looks of this fourth movie I'm still reeled in man this franchise has me hooked it looks like we're gonna be further expanding this assassin universe diving in to aspects that we didn't know were there and Bill Skarsgård in there I think is a major plus really happy to see him getting more work and it looks like he's the main antagonist for John Wick in this movie but it feels now like this is like the third time John Wick has been put on a task to free himself and betcha it's not gonna end up good at the end of this movie and he'll be on a path where more people are after him either way these are still some of the best action movies outside of superhero films and I'm all up for it now the other trailer I want to dive into here today guys is for a movie that maybe not a lot of you knew about but but once I tell you what it's about, you might be excited. First, looking at here, the poster for the movie, I'm going to be talking about Christmas Bloody Christmas. Now, the premise of this movie is it's Christmas Eve and a fiery record store owner, Tori Toms, just wants to get drunk and party until the robotic Santa Claus at a nearby toy store goes haywire and makes her night more than a little complicated. Here, looking at the official trailer, what we essentially got here is an animatronic robotic Santa Claus that becomes full fully aware and starts wanting to just kill people. I love the look of this movie, the neon colors, the vibrancy, the rock aesthetic, and just the idea of a robotic Santa Claus wanting to take people down. Oh, you got me hooked. And as a bonus, it doesn't even seem to be like one of those cheesy premise movies where it's like, yeah, it looks dumb, but it'll be fun. This could actually genuinely be a good movie. Joe Bigos, who's behind this movie, his last two projects have been critically acclaimed, and it seems like he has a handle on making a campy yet good movie. It'll be released seen on Shutter December 9, 2022. I just wanted to put it on your guys' radar because I tend to know my audience and it felt like something you guys would enjoy to hear about. But moving on from there, getting some more movie news stories here, let's get a little update on Mortal Kombat 2. Now you guys might have remembered we've already gotten that first Mortal Kombat movie. I know it's up and down with some people. I enjoyed it for what it was. Definitely a very flawed film, but I'm excited to see them do more in that world. But with Warner Brothers and all the changes they've been making lately, it's kind of up in the air whether we were still going to get this second film and we got an update from one of the stars. Actor Louis Tan who plays Cole Young, the new addition to the Mortal Kombat world, had this to say about the movie when talking about Warner Brothers Discovery being in charge. Well, it impacts us a lot, but not really us in particular because New Line is the studio that is under the branch of Warner Brothers. But they're very happy with the movie and obviously it performed very well. It's one of our most viewed films of their Warner Brothers slate, even though it came out at the worst time ever possible. But no, we're still full steam ahead Head, and now we have Ed Boom with us as well. So we got the stamp of approval from the legend himself. Number two is going to be absolutely insane, way bigger. Obviously, he's not going to talk down on the project he's involved in, but I'm excited for this. I fully believe they're going to go way bigger with this one. It's also happy to know Warner Brothers is happy with the direction of the movie. To me, what I'm still waiting to hear about is give me that Johnny Cage casting. Who is going to be Johnny Cage? That's going to be the thing that makes me more excited or about the same as level is excited for this movie. How are you guys feeling about Mortal Kombat 2 still happening and them wanting to go bigger and insane with it? Speaking on another project that we didn't know if it was dead or not, let's talk about the IT prequel series Welcome to Derry. Now before Warner Brothers had their whole merger and Discovery took over, we know Warner Brothers was trying really hard to make their HBO Max series something of a big success and that meant straight to streaming series based off their popular IPs and well Pennywise, the IT franchise was going to get one of them. The series right now is titled Welcome to Derry and it'll essentially follow the first time Penny Pennywise the Dancing Clown landed on Earth and just started eating people. But again, the project went quiet once Discovery took over and with them going left and right wanting to go bigger with theatrical releases, we didn't know if they were still going to push forward with their streaming service. Luckily here, it looks like they are. Variety here has it reported that Jason Fuchs and Brad Kane will serve as the co-showrunners for the series and HBO Max has officially given the show a series production commitment, meaning it is officially going to be happening. Everything up until now was just 
just pre-development, getting the scripts made, having an idea, presenting it to the studio, and now they're fully on board with everything happening. They even say Andy Muschietti, who directed the two It movies, might direct the first pilot. This is exciting to me. The only other thing I want to hear about this series now that I know it's happening is is Bill Skarsgård returning. I feel like he's gotta be, even though he's doing some good work outside of the It franchise, the boy is still Pennywise in our hearts. But this is where I throw it off to you guys. You hear that the It series is still happening. Welcome to Dairy is not dead. Are you excited for the streaming service? And do you think Bill Skarsgård will return as Pennywise? Sticking on the horror train here, we got another update concerning Scream 6. Oh, as the months roll along, we are just getting closer to this sequel and I cannot wait for it. And what Jenna Ortega just said about the movie has me even more hyped. She was recently doing an interview and promoting her new Netflix series Wednesday when she got asked about Scream 6 and specifically how Nev Campbell is not returning. Jenna Ortega had this to say, I feel like I can't really speak too much on that just because it's not necessarily my character, but I will say there's so much going on in this next one that it's so action heavy and so gore heavy that I think you're going to be distracted almost. She continues though, but it's very clear, like there's references to Sydney, of course, you know, it's nice because there's still a protectiveness in the script and that's something that the actors had naturally over her because obviously we respect her and we want the best for her she's missed and thought of so a couple of thoughts on them for one it does really suck that Nev Campbell is not returning for this six movie even though we heard rumors that maybe she might show up the more the cast members have come out and said she's not coming back and Nev Campbell has like doubled down on it even going as far as mentioning that the studio didn't want to pay her the money that's not them being coy or trying to surprise fans like that's some serious straight up drama and I do not blame Nev Campbell at all for asking what she deserves. But with Scream 5, I grew to love the new direction of the series. I like these new characters they've introduced. I want to see these surviving members interact with Gail Weathers and Kirby. So I'm invested either way, and in my own little happy headcanon, I could just imagine Sydney is married with children happily forever after. We don't need Ghostface chasing her. But if Ghostface decides to go after her, I'm not going to complain either. But the other aspect of this that gets me so excited is her mentioning, oh, this movie is action heavy. It is gore heavy. So much so, it's going to distract you and not make you even wonder, where's Sydney? To quote Randy Meeks from Scream 2. Number one, the body count is always bigger. More blood, more gore carnage candy. I love that Scream 6 is staying true to those words and giving us more action and gore. I cannot wait. Especially in this New York setting, I can't wait to see how just crazy Ghostface gets. This is where I throw it off to you horror fans. With Neff Campbell not returning, do you think having enough action and gore can keep you satisfied? to not have Sidney Prescott in there. Moving on here, we got a cool little update concerning Godzilla vs. Kong 2. This is the sequel I never thought was gonna be happening. I still remember the days when we thought this was gonna be a solo King Kong movie, but no, it is an official Godzilla vs. Kong sequel. The last we heard about the movie is the plot that they were gonna be going with, that essentially Godzilla and King Kong were gonna have to team up for some new threat that was taking over Earth. And every time I brought that up, people started going, then why the hell is it called Godzilla vs. Kong 2? And I I tried telling people that's just what us the fans are calling it for now because we don't know the official title. We know the working title is Origins, but that's not what they're going to put on the posters or market the movie. And now it looks like we know what they're going to call it instead of Godzilla vs. Kong 2. Thanks to a couple of crew members who have been working on the movie, we've gotten some leaked photos on the set that these crew members are wearing logos that read Godzilla and Kong. Brilliant! Since it looks very likely in this movie, Godzilla vs. Kong are not going to be fighting off or doing the whole thing where they fight for a little bit and then team up to fight another monster, it doesn't make sense for them to call it Godzilla vs. Kong 2 or Godzilla vs. Kong some sort of subtitle. Godzilla and Kong, I think, is a good little addition. It makes sense. It lets you know Godzilla and Kong are part of this movie, but that they're most likely going to be fighting some other big threat. Now, I just wonder if there's going to be more to that title because, again, that could just be the placeholder title. That could be what the crew and team are calling it on set, but maybe when they market the movie, it'll be something like Godzilla and Kong versus Destroya or Godzilla and Kong Battle for the Earth. I don't know, something like that. But if they go with Godzilla and Kong, hey, I'm gonna be happy with that too. I think the fans right now are just wanting to see who this other big bad guy is that they're gonna be facing off and if they're gonna be a worthy opponent for the both of them. This is where I throw off to my Godzilla versus Kong fans. You hear that the title is going with Godzilla and Kong. Are you happy with that? And do you think there could be a subtitle added? Something else I wanna discuss here that 
that I want you guys to take with a grain of salt, but I think is a strong possibility. We got an update on Deadpool 3 that has me really pumped. Earlier this week, we've had a scooper that's been reliable in the past, but has also gotten some stuff wrong. Daniel Richmond here took to his Patreon to mention that Owen Wilson will be playing the character of Mobius, a TVA agent in Deadpool 3, and is going to have a big role. And if this is true, that Owen Wilson is gonna show up as a TVA agent, that changes the game for Deadpool 3. Now my excitement for this movie, through the roof. I mean, it was already through the roof once you told me Wolverine, Hugh Jackman was in here with Deadpool, but I was also wondering, how are they gonna make this part of the MCU? They've already established that the Fox universe is its own world. And now with Multiverse of Madness and Spider-Man No Way Home, they've made it very clear it's possible for us to jump into other universes, even if they were owned by other studios. So I was curious to how they would explain Deadpool maybe coming over into the MCU for a little bit, and with them also calling this a road trip movie with Deadpool and Wolverine, it looks like it's a road trip movie with them through the multiverse or through the Fox timeline. This even makes so much sense with the ending of Deadpool 2 and was kind of like a happy little accident because if you remember, at the end of Deadpool 2, Deadpool gets this time machine and just starts going all over the timeline having fun. Going to X-Men Origins, saving his girlfriend, doing all this stuff and it's like, oh that was a nice little gag. But now, that little gag can actually be a vital plot point for Deadpool 3. The TVA's whole thing is to stop any incursions or mess ups in the timeline and with Deadpool jumping around that's gonna mess up something so I can 100% believe that Owen Wilson steps in with Deadpool tells him hey you're messing up we got to take you into custody and see what your punishment is same as Loki and then somewhere along the way he meets up with Wolverine and they just start going through the history of the Fox universe maybe even somewhere by the end ending up in the MCU not to mention the fact I also just really love Owen Wilson and his character of Mobius in here so having Deadpool interact with those characters and what Wolverine will think about all this this so cool. But again, let's take it with a grain of salt. For all we know, this could be false, but to me, this was unexpected, but also makes a lot of sense. What do you guys think about Owen Wilson, the TVA agent, having a big role in Deadpool 3? Do you believe it or do you not? But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.